Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Flash, as well as the latest episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Starting off with The Flash, um, I really like how they kind of started this episode, because I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on? I was like, oh, Snart's here, that's so cool, Captain Cold's here. I was like, wait a minute, you're dead. I was like, oh, wait, is this a Flashpoint thing where he's actually still alive in this time point? He's like, no, he's not. Because it kind of brings up that whole, well, really quickly, it turns out that was, you know, set in the past, because it's basically us getting to see how Mirror Master uh, came to get his powers and everything. Well, not just him, also another um, meta called Top, which I'll get to them later on. So this is actually back in 2014 with the whole particle accelerator thing and everything happening. But um, that was kind of cool. It's just like I was like, I was like, oh, that's so cool. But then, then it kind of it kind of cements what I was saying before, like because. Because I was thinking like, oh, well, maybe things ended up differently for Snart. Because at the beginning, I was like, oh, does this mean Snart's actually a villain in this timeline because of the whole Flashpoint thing? But then I'm like, Legends kind of puts it sets that like anything that happens on Legends that might affect the other shows like like future wise. Like, for instance, the whole like um, John having a son instead of a daughter, at least at that point in time or whatever. Maybe he had a little girl before or after. Who knows? But the point I'm trying to make is like. The fact is that um, he's already kind of going off to become a hero and, you know, it seems like basically Legends takes place in a, like, the futures they go to, it's already affected by Flashpoint. And that's a, I mean, I know, well, it makes you wonder how far back the past is affected by Flashpoint, though. That kind of brings up, begs that question, too, because it's like Flashpoint would have affected their lives prior to like them like him being part of like you know um the legends you know same thing for firestorm too like all, all of their lives would have been affected but but it's like one of those things it's kind of like currently the only thing that seems to have changed on arrow is like john's son whether that's just because it's like well you know now they're trying to fit you know if you want to get technical about it, it's like oh they're trying to fit the consistency with um the fact is, the continuity, I rather should say, not consistency. It was like, oh, the future that Legends kind of presented. So, or maybe that was the plan all along. I don't know why I get all bogged down by it. But it seems like, you know, you know, because they're time traveling, so they're not necessarily affected by Flashpoint. But it does seem like, hey, like, with them time traveling, time travel is already set with the notion that Flashpoint has already happened. But I was just bringing it up. I was like, how much of the past is actually affected by it, too? Because everyone's past and their presence, their whole lives change because of Flashpoint. So it's like, how far back does Flashpoint affect everyone's lives? That was kind of interesting. And since I'm bringing it up and everything, I, I actually did over the weekend watch the um, animated uh, Justice League Flashpoint movie. So it was, it was very good. Um... Because I I, uh, I think I mentioned it in the first episode, I had no idea what Flashpoint was all about. I had no idea that's what the whole thing entailed. Uh, him going back in time, trying to change things. I didn't realize that was what that was about. Obviously, the movie's all about Flashpoint, him changing some things and coming back and things are normal. This kind of took that idea and they're like, so what if, you know, I mean, I'm sure it's probably different in comic books. Because for one, the Flashpoint movie is kind of like a one-off thing. But I'm sure, because it, it's a much more condensed version, I'm sure. Because it I, a lot of people are affected by Flashpoint, so... But, uh, you know, this is kind of, the show is kind of showing, like, the after effects of Flashpoint. I'm sure there were after effects in the comic books, too. But the movie made it seem like, oh, there was nothing. Everything went back to normal. But that's just because it's like, yeah, we don't have time to delve into just how much change, really change because of Flashpoint. Or maybe in the comic books, nothing did change. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I'd like to think things did change because I feel like that's why the show's going the direction it's going. It's because of that. But I'm trailing off. I'm, I'm going to get to the point. Mirror Master was pretty cool, and also liked his significant other, um, her name was Top. That whole situation, I love the fact, like, I love, uh, Tom Cavanaugh as well. It's like, I've always loved him. First season when he was, you know, Eobar disguised as well, liked him last season as Earth 2 Wells. I mean, obviously, he's still Earth 2 Wells in this one, but also because it's like, you get an opportunity to see Tom Cavanaugh have a little bit more fun. He's like, you know, to get to see a little bit more of his personality come up, because it's like, um... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Cisco was like, oh, I'm coming up with a name. It's like mirrors. It's like, uh, uh. And then you had, um, 
Wells being like, Mirror Master, boom, got it. And then you got, then you get Cisco a little upset, and then it came to naming his um, girlfriend. He's like, uh, Vertigo, uh, Vertigo, uh, top, yeah, boom, in your face. And Caitlin's like, okay, it's like, Cisco, calm down. Cisco doesn't like it when people do that. Like, it, it's kind of come up constantly. He's like, uh, hey, hey, the naming thing is my thing. But on occasion, you'd be like, but I will recognize that is a cool name. I mean, Barry was the first, like, you know, Wells, that was like, that was actually a good name. He's like, thank you. He interestingly brings up the fact is that there actually is a um, Mirror Master on Earth, too, except rather than being a meta, he has a special gun that does so. Which I had to look it up to make sure, because I thought that was the case. Um, that basically his, like, I guess that's another version of. Uh, Mirror Master, I guess it's like depending, I don't know if there's like a meta-human version of Mirror Master in the comic books, but it does seem like there is the more, um, I guess you could say science fictional approach to him in a sense of like it's more weapon-based rather than power-based. I mean, granted, when you break it down, all these superpowers are science fictional based, I guess, to a certain extent. It's not really magic, it's more science than anything, but um, because even the one in the Flashpoint movie, he used like a mirror to con. But I guess that could have been the fact is I don't I can't remember if that was actually a device or was it just like him using his powers to a mirror. So was he actually a meta? And interestingly enough, uh, Captain Cole was in that too. That was one of the villains that was with him, as well as um, Heatwave. And there was another villain too. Um, I don't I don't forgot who it was, but that was just kind of interesting. I was like, oh, Captain Cole is technically a part of Mirror Master's life in this, and maybe they're always tied together. Maybe those are like three villains that always kind of find their way to each other, part of the same group, because they are the rogues. I did forget about that, so never mind. They're they are part of a group and whatnot. So okay, but that was that was still neat. But I did like Mirror Master's powers and everything, and how. Like, I really love the fact that we had him and um, Jesse and Barry chasing after him when he was like, like him and um, Topper in the mirrors, the reflections of the buildings going through it and everything. I was like, dude, that looks so sick. Just, I like the effect of what, like, it kind of makes the um, glass kind of look a little wavy. And you have Barry and um, Jesse chasing after him. And very interesting thing about this, I didn't even think about it until someone pointed out, it's like Jesse's new... Uh, not this week's episode, but last week's episode brought up the fact is that Jesse's uh, uh, outfit is going to be that of like, it's very similar to uh, trajectories, which is kind of interesting because I was like, huh, because I actually did look up her like, I guess, canonical um, suit from the comic books and stuff like that, obviously way different than what she has now. But it makes you wonder, I get, I guess to a certain extent, the reason why they have that is because trajectory was existed, you know, in this, you know, because it's like, you, it makes you question like everything you know about everything. It's like, how much change that we just don't know yet? How much are they going to reveal later on? But like, oh, you thought that wasn't change? Um, actually it is. We just hadn't mentioned it yet. It's like, dude, I'm so excited about that. But um, that just to me was very interesting. And I'm just curious to see where, like, you know, if that was the case, like, Trajectory actually existed in this timeline, too, and they just took that suit and they modified it, or is it fact this Trajectory never, because Barry didn't bring it up or anything, so I guess it's just kind of like, you know, I guess more so than anything, it's like, well, we're basing the suit off of Barry's design or something like that, which, it would have been cool to see, like, her outfit from, um, the comic books, but, you know, this is fine, too. Still kind of learning the ropes. I did like when Barry, when they were training and she kind of tripped at one point. It did seem like she kind of did a bit of recovery. No, she didn't just do it. She actually did do a bit of recovery. I like just the whole look of that whole thing. It's just like Barry kind of circling around and running on the ceiling. She's trying to do the same thing. Like I said, she trips up and everything. And then Barry's like, hey, you got to be more perceptive. You got to realize you never want to go into opportunity, you know, you know, look always like kind of get to know the area before you go in. You can't never go anywhere blind. He's like, huh. Makes me, huh, I sound just like Oliver now. I was like, ah, about time some of um, Oliver's lessons kind of sunk in. So that was kind of cool. Also in this episode, we saw, well, well, I'll get to the other stuff later. But first of all, I want to talk about Caitlyn. The fact is, like, you know, there was a whole situation of, you know, Barry being trapped in a mirror. And it just led to that interesting, um, just the fact is, I love, the, I love that that's actually a thing. It's like, because he was in a mirror, everything is backward. So even him talking was backward. So they had to get a hold of the vice to kind of get him to talk, like, for them to be able to hear him normally. And we didn't really get a look at what it was like being in a mirror. He just talked about the fact that it was very dark. And we kind of got, like, a small look at it. It like, almost looked like there was space. Like, how you would imagine, like, him being standing in front of, like, space. It looked like just kind of a vast emptiness-like space. So that was kind of neat to see. But, um... 
the whole situation are just like, oh, you were trying to freeze the mirror so that basically Barry can phase its way through it. And they're like, oh, I guess we can't do it. I was like, oh, no, the metahuman alert going is going off. I guess we're all going to have to go. And then Barry's like, guys, are, really? Because it's the second time they did it. Because earlier, everyone was like, oh, about the whole uh, whale situation. Well, I'll get to it in a second. And then everyone's just going off. Everyone's leaving. He's like, oh, okay, guys, I guess I'll stay here and work on a metahuman thing that we're supposed to be working on. But it, it's okay. It's fine. But I like the moment Caitlyn was still there, and I was like, "Oh, Caitlyn, you're still here." Everyone else was. I was like, "All oh, right." I was a complete idiot because even brought it up, you know, in the preview of the episode. I was like, "Right, Caitlyn, Killer Frost, freezing powers." It's like I did not notice that. Um, I guess Barry didn't notice her kind of slipping behind a mirror, but I guess at the same time, it's like, well, he's in a mirror, so his peripheral is kind of a little blocked. Um, but that was kind of interesting. The fact is, Wells kind of mentions that before they leave and everything. And he's like, yeah, you know that um, our machine kind of fell. Cisco's like, then how did Barry get out? He's like, that's the question. And it's like, oh, that's so cool. Especially because we have the end of the episode. Caitlin's taking a shower and everything. And it freezes. And then she's like freaking out. And then she looks at her hair. Her hair is turning a different color. So it's her lips. And it's just like, dude, that's so cool. Like, it's, it's happening. And I'm sure... I'm sure this Caitlyn's, you know, Caitlyn's affected because it's like, you know, I don't know whether it's the exact reasons why, um, you know, maybe she's afraid because of everything that happened with Zoom, Zoom getting inside of her head and maybe, maybe that's going to come back to it because it was kind of like, oh, maybe what her seeing Zoom everywhere. Some people are like, oh, maybe that's PTSD. Maybe it's more than that. We really haven't gone back to that since she kind of possibly dealt with it. But it could be kind of interesting. We see that kind of come back and it kind of messes with her. She's like, I'm becoming a metahuman. And now she's seeing Zoom everywhere, kind of getting inside of her head about it and everything. Because I feel like kind of like the same thing with Cisco. I think I brought this up before. Like, and when you find out about her um, having powers in this timeline, it's like, oh, yeah, because, you know, um, Cisco felt weird about having uh, powers because it's like he got them from Wells because it's like oh Wells is an evil person and I technically got powers from him so it's like who's to say my powers aren't evil but Caitlyn's got that to a different extent because I always I always said like well the fact is Barry technically got his powers from Eobard so that doesn't make his powers evil but you know everyone's you know got their thing but it's like to me it's like Caitlyn has more of a reason because it's like yeah she met the other version of herself that had powers it's like she became a villain a killer so it's kind of like I get that concern but I guess it's also because it's just like it's scary you know because she's also dealing by herself but I think I don't know I guess she's afraid of how people were they would react I mean how did they handle it in this reality like because I bring it I brought it up before it's like how how was what was Barry like in this reality because it's like it's almost like Barry was always on autopilot throughout his entire life it makes you know because he isn't the Barry that existed in this timeline that they've known so they haven't really brought it up but like it seems like Barry is a bit of a dick because he wasn't even there for Cisco during the whole Dante situation. I mean, not to the way that he should have been, you know. Like, I mean, it's understandable why he didn't do what he did. You know, not going back in time to fix that situation. But still, it's going to be interesting seeing that. Especially now because she's going to be hiding the fact that it's like, oh, is that a little gray in your hair? She's like, oh, no, it's nothing. Oh, what's up with your lips? Oh, no, I'm just trying a new type of makeup or something. You know, she's hiding it very, you know, that's... Uh, because to me, that whole shower scene was like, oh, is it because she used her powers a little bit more and now it's like she's losing control of them? Or has she always been losing a control of them, but she kind of kept it a little more under wraps? Because it seems like, you know, I guess it's more so than anything. It's like her powers are growing to the point she can't control them because, I mean, for one, she's not trying to. She's too scared. She's trying to keep them bottled up rather than kind of letting them get released on her own. Like I said, it, it would be interesting to see what, you know, I feel like, you know, with them around her, she'll become a better person. Um, because Earth 2 Caitlyn didn't have, well, she had, um, Ronnie and everything, but I mean, Ronnie ended up being a bad guy too, but nevertheless, she has all of Team Flash to help her through it, so it's like, you know, good influences, so, I mean, maybe she could become a villain, maybe, maybe not, you know, maybe she ends up becoming a part of the kick-ass team, it's like, yo, her, Barry, and, um, Cisco out there, meta-humaning it, humaning it up, kicking ass, um, I I I can't talk. In this episode, um, kind of really quickly going back to it, I was about to get to the 
the relationship stuff, but I'll get to that in a second. The fact is, we got to see, you know, um, Tom Cavanaugh have like, even a little bit more fun with the fact is of playing different whales. The fact is, um, different Earth whales, because it's like, I'm not going to be around. It's like, Team Flash, you know, we missed having whales around, but it's like, oh, I can't stay here forever. I got fixed stuff on Earth 2 as well. It's like, what about another whales? Which I have to bring up the question. I mean... How do we know their Earths aren't kind of screwed up to and they need are needed? But I guess it's like if they're responding to this, it means they're kind of uh, need. Uh, they're not really needed. I mean, there were multiple versions. It's just like we saw one that was kind of a bit of a. He seemed like he might be a bit of a drunk cowboy, and it's just like next, next. It's like oh, a mine. You never trust a mine. And then get to the final dude who's pretty chill, and I love it. Cisco's like. Yeah, he's smart, he's nice, and he's not evil. Yeah, it'd be nice to find out what it's like to have a whales like that. He seems like such a pretty chill dude, so... It's going to be interesting to see how things progress from here. It's just like every season he gets to literally reinvent that character. That's so interesting to me. Because the fact is, we never, we still don't know Earth-1 uh, whales. We still have never, like, actually got to know what the real whales was like, you know, with the whole Eobard disguising himself as him and everything. And side note, they went up to Earth-19. So, because I think I went before at some point referring to Supergirl's Earth as like Earth-X. Because it's like, you have um, Jay Garrett being from Earth-3. It's like, I mean, really, it's all perspective. It's like, this is kind of the prime Earth, possibly. But, I mean, you look at everyone else's Earth, they're like, no, we're the prime Earth. Like, you know, Wales kept saying it last season. It's like, why are we Earth-2 or Earth-B? You should be Earth to, to me. Your Earth to an Earth B. My Earth is the main Earth, so it's kind of you know it's all in perspective. So, but focusing on the relationship aspects of things in this episode, one we had the whole Wally and uh, Jesse thing, and like she kissed him and everything. He's like, whoa, whoa. She's like, oh, I, am I misreading the signs or something? He's like, no, it's just you know, you know, you're going back to Earth too and everything. She's like, oh, I guess we'll just be friends. But then Wally's like, nah, I was being an idiot. It's like. I want more than that. It's like, oh, obviously you do, because you two definitely like each other. It's so freaking obvious. But at the same time, it's kind of also like, it's understandable why you'd be a little worried. I mean, it's a long-distance relationship. And when I say long, I mean long-distance relationship. You have to cross over dimensions. Um, he kind of brought it up in his episode. Like, oh, the fact is, like, oh, that's why you, you're, you, you know, you're meant to be a speedster, and I'm not. It, like, just me being a douchebag, it's almost like you're kind of guilt trying to make her feel guilty about becoming a speedster when you couldn't, like, you know. But the fact is, she's back on Earth 2 now, so it's like, hey, Wally, don't worry. I'm sure you're going to do some crazy stuff to get his powers back. But the fact is, he didn't do anything crazy, so I'm like... Maybe that won't be the case. Maybe he legitimately won't do anything stupid. There's that's me hoping. I was I'm I was dead certain. I was like last episode. I was like, dude, he's definitely going to do something stupid to try and get his powers. But it's going to be interesting. It's just I, I want it so badly. I want to see everyone together. I want to see Barry. I want to see Wally. I want to see Jay Garrett. I want to see Jesse Quick. All of them, dude, dude. That would be a dream come true, and it'd be the most amazing thing ever. And an interesting thing about it in this episode, I'm just I'm thinking about it. That's kind of interesting. This is our first time this season so far dealing with non-alchemy metahumans because um, Top and Mirror Master were already metas before. I mean, he was trapped in the mirror and everything. It's one of those things. It makes you wonder, like, how much is affected by... I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot. Flashpoint. Okay, I'm only going to do that once. I completely forgot about that. Though. I was like, totally let that bit slip my mind. It's not really a bit because bits have to be funny, but that's totally not. Nevertheless... It doesn't make you wonder, like, was he a... Did, is that how that went down in the original timeline? Or did Snart actually kill him? You know, so many questions. It question, makes you question everything. It's like, everything you see this season, I was like, is that something that actually is new? Or did that actually happen in the other timeline, too, and we just weren't aware about it? Or is it like, oh, that happened differently in the time? You know, bringing up those questions. But getting back to relationships... Uh, um, Barry and um, Iris. I love the whole like making out thing, and it's like the moment Joe's here, he's just like, "Oh, hey, Joe." She's like, "Okay, what the hell was that about?" He's like, "What do you mean?" Okay, you know, you're freaking out about making out in front of dad. He's like, "Yeah, but like, you know, that's your dad, and he's my dad, and, you know, he, he's, he's Joe." And, you know, it kind of led to that awkward conversation because it's like you already know Joe's OK with them being together because he's known for the longest time how Barry's felt about Iris. He's probably he's known ever since Barry was a little kid and first met her and saw, love at first sight. But, you know, it was just kind of awkward. It's like, I love you and I love Iris. And it's like, yeah, you're adults. You can do your thing. Just don't don't do that in front of me. It's going to take me a while to kind of get used to it. It's weird, you know. 
I guess, I guess in some way you could look at it as being like, Joe's kind of representing the audience of the show because it's like, oh, people are like, yeah, but Iris and Barry are brother and sister in this. That's a little weird, you know. You know, once again, I'm bringing it up again. Uh, and don't really have that big of a deal with it to me. It's like you grew up like siblings. It doesn't mean you're actually our siblings. So you might have thought of each other like that at one point. But the fact of the matter is Barry always thought of her as something more. He's always been in love with her. So, I mean, that's how I look at, you know, different perspective. I'm not saying one way is right and one way is wrong. It's just that's how I see things. Other people might not see it that way. So I feel like Joe is kind of that, the writers or creators of it being like, people, we understand you're a little weirded out by it. But, hey, they're in love. It's what happens. They're not biological siblings, so there's no problem type of thing. But it's just more so than anything. It's just I'm sure just it's just seeing the two people that you love in the world most together. And it's just kind of like, well, we're a family. And it's just like you're kind of like my son and she's my actual daughter. And it's 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 weird for me as the father. And just I'm in a very weird uh, situation. Which is kind of interesting about Joe and that other girl, late lady. I feel, I feel like, oh, I feel like such an asshole for calling her a girl. I'm, I meant lady. Oh, I'm not gonna live that down. Um, what's her name, Cecile? I don't even remember the episode that they, they referenced at the beginning. We're like, oh, previously, it's like I don't even remember that episode. Um, but okay, like, hey, lady and Joe's like that totally is like into him, but he's like, oh no, I got plans with my kids. He's like, oh, okay, and then. Barry asked him about it. He's like, dude, what? You getting, you're like, I get nervous. You, you know, you get nervous. I get, I get nervous around women too. So, um, but you end up understanding why Barry's kind of the way he is. He's like, you know, he, he kind of explains everything. He's like, you know, during that awkward situation, they're just like, uh, they're all, uh, having, uh, just hanging out. Uh, there's Wally and Jesse and there's Joe and then there's Iris and Barry. And then like his arm is kind of wrapped around Iris and he, he Barry kind of turns a look at Joe and Joe's a little uncomfortable and it kind of makes Barry a little uncomfortable. Iris gets on. She's like, no, what? All right, we got to talk. I thought you two talked. It's like, we, we did. Yeah. It's like, you said you're okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm fine. But it's like, it doesn't mean I'm 100% okay with it. It's like, what's your excuse? And it's like, oh man, there's many humans out there. Whew, Mirror Master, our top. It's like, yo, we got to go deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go do that. Like, oh, thank God we're out of this situation. But, you know, it ended up being, you know, Barry is like, I've got everything I want. And he's a little afraid to let it, to lose it all. I mean, it's because, like, for the first time in his life, he's kind of got everything he's worn. I mean, granted, you know, not everything, but he's kind of moved past the point of, like, hey, I can't have my dad, I can't have my mom. But he's accepted that. But for what he can have in this life without it costing other people everything, he has everything he needs. He has Joe, he has her, he has Wally, he just has his entire family. He has Cisco, he has Caitlin. It's just, he's in a good place. He has his entire family there, and I include them all too because hey, they're all family. Because um, you know that's what I love about these shows. It's just like I love I love that about teams. Like I love that aspect of teamwork of being like, oh, it's more than just a teamwork thing. It's like we're a family thing. You know, that's just, just just me. But nevertheless, um, that was just you know. It's easy to kind of not have to worry about when you have nothing because you have nothing to lose. But when you have something, it's just you're always, you know, after everything Barry's been through, lost so much, it's kind of understandable why he'd be scared. And it's like, I've got everything I want and I can just as easily lose it. So, I mean, but, you know, he's got to be, he's more hopeful about it. And he's just, you know, he's like, it's easier to fail than it is, you know, in his mind, easier to fail fail and live with failure and kind of rather than kind of living with succeeding a little bit if that makes any sense so but uh, it's it's really nice seeing them together just uh, just uh making out and everything and he even did he kissed her in front of um joe and joe he's like i guess it's time for me to get my own place and joe's like mm, good he's like oh you're, it sounds like i'm getting kicked out he's like oh i don't know whether i'm leaving or i'm getting kicked out it's like hey it comes down to you however you want to see it's a very touching moment it's a very good episode i'm very curious i'm super excited like i'm loving this season so far i want to see more of what we end up coming across and now moving on to this week's episode of agents of shield um many things for one that darko we still really don't know what that's all about what it's really capable of it does bring up an interesting thing at the beginning of the episode where you have like lucy and her husband looking at it now her husband's uh, first language is german so when they looked at the book though he sees it in german but she sees it in english um, basically what she described it as is like, we're not reading the book. The book is reading us. Like it's basing itself on who's opening it. So that's kind of interesting. So basically I want, it makes you wonder, like, does the book show you different things, not just in language wise, but does it show you different things depending on the will of the user, essentially like 
depending on what that person who's reading it wants, it'll kind of show them what that person most desires or what might lead them to being what they most desire. Anyway, we have the entire team um, working, uh, basically trying to break Eli out of prison because it's like, yeah, the ghosties are going after him and everything, which brings up, um, I love the fact this feel was like, yeah, so, uh, you know, Robbie's growing on me. How about you kind of asking Mac that and Mac doesn't really give an answer. It's kind of like, well, you know, he's kind of hard to work with plus doing the whole flaming head thing. It's just kind of like, uh, that's not the easiest thing to kind of get to work around either. But it's kind of interesting when they kind of break into the prison. You had that interesting, there was like a moment I couldn't help but notice that when, you know, um, basically the team, you know, the team split up and everything and you have Sky with part of the team going to rescue May and Coulson and then it's kind of like, she and you know afterwards you see like a smile on Phil's face when he kind of turns to look at Sky I'm, Daisy sorry and um, God I'm turning into season three Phil here aren't I but um, part of me was thinking like oh it must be nice for Costa because it's like he gets to officially well not unofficially officially work with her because I mean really they're not there in any official capacity. So it was probably nice for him kind of working with Daisy again after so long. And surprisingly, speaking of Daisy, like she kicks some ass in this episode. It's like showing as like, yo, I don't just need my powers. It's like, you know, prior to her becoming an inhuman, like, well, I mean, technically you're always an inhuman until you became, got powers, I guess. So it's like, I mean, because they even broke it down. It's like uh, when it comes to the genome within the human bodies, it's like inhumans and humans are literally like what was like a 2% difference. They're like 98% similar. I didn't know that's how it worked. That's kind of interesting. But nevertheless, um, you know, she was well trained in everything like that. I mean, May's a pretty good teacher. So it's like, it's kind of cool seeing you reminding you. I was like, yeah, Daisy doesn't need her powers just to kick some ass. She can kick ass otherwise. I mean, because she can't be using her powers because it's like, you got she got to give her, her arms time to heal. They give her new gauntlets and everything and they're like a little bit better. But it's like, she, you know, going, doing any quaking, she's definitely going to completely mess up her arms. They're already to the point that they are kind of broken, I think. Anymore, she'll completely shatter them So. That's one reason why she, I was wondering if they were going to end up pushing her to the point that she would have to, I mean, she did pretty well fighting all of them by herself, which was, we can all admit, stupid. I mean, because, you know, May ends up talking to her about it later on, and it's like, May, like, it's not that Daisy doesn't trust S.H.I.E.L.D., because it's like, you know, because she was telling Robbie that earlier, and he was like, what, you're telling me to trust him, you don't even trust him, it's like, she's like, my reason for staying away from them is to make sure everyone's okay. And, you know, it kind of ties back into it later on when May was like, are you an idiot? Don't go off doing stupid stuff by yourself. I know why you're doing it. You're trying to push everyone away, but that's not going to work. We care about you too much, especially Coulson. He's got a big heart, and, you know, he didn't give up on me, you know, basically saying, like, he pulled me out of the cubicle because, you know, how May became known as a Calvary with everything with that girl. That ended up putting him in a, putting her in a situation she just didn't want to be out in the field anymore. Got a desk job and everything until Phil kind of called her back in the first season to kind of form this new team. So, you know, he was there for her, like, even though she was kind of, even when you've kind of given up on yourself, you know, she was basically like saying, Phil is going to be there for you, whether you like it or not. You don't get to choose who cares about you. And basically kind of bringing the fact is that, hey, Lincoln wouldn't want you kind of putting yourself out there trying to, like, uh, kill yourself because of what happened to him and everything. Which, you know, it's kind of been the thing that seems like that was the motive. That combined with the whole, like, um, Hive situation, it seems like to be a big part of so why she left. So it might not be a situation where we get a full detail of why she left. It seems like that or those are contributing factors. She doesn't want to be around people because she, I guess she feels like she destroys people's lives. I mean... And she blames herself for what happened to Lincoln, I guess, like, you know, getting uh, controlled by Hyde, but, you know, also losing, you know, could never being able to be a part of that consciousness again, like being connected like that, just for the things that she did when he when she was under his control. And the fact is that she's no longer under his control, just that emptiness it made her feel, I guess, just it was just too much. And that's one reason why she left. Maybe there's a lot more to it than that. I don't know that those obviously seem like the biggest reasons why she's keeping her distance. Also, we had that situation where Robbie was um, dealing that whole situation with uh, that guy that was in there. He's from like a local gang or something. And at first, Robbie was kind of talking to him, but then like Matt kind of pulled him back. But when they were escaping with his uncle Eli, uh, he ended up kind of confronting the guy, telling Eli to go ahead and ended up talking to him. And he's like, basically, this guy's gang is the one that's connected to what happened to his brother Gabe. Like, it was basically a drive-by shooting that left Gabe unable to walk. And 
you know, the guy's like, I'm kind of basically like, hey, I'm a reformed. It's like, yo, I didn't put that hit out. That was on someone else. And the only people that can tell you are the other people in the game because I have no idea who it was. They didn't tell me anything. And he's like, but like, there's no one else to tell Robbie because Robbie's already killed them all. And so he kills this dude. And then he, I love when he walks out the cell as Ghost Rider. Even everyone else fighting all the cell, all the guys get back in their cell and close it on, on themselves. It's like, holy crap. It's like, it just shows how badass and terrifying you are. I was so sure what was going to happen is his Uncle Eli is going to come back around like, Robbie, is that you? And see him like that. Because he didn't want his uncle to see him like that. Just the same way he doesn't want Gabe to. But you know it's going to happen eventually. But side note, uh, just kicking ass like always. Ended up killing two of those ghost dudes in this episode. I was, I was like, dude, I was like, oh man, look at him picking up the chain and killing him. Like, dude, that was sick. So, but that also brought up my mind. I was like, so that means he didn't keep the chain from last episode. After he had Hellfire tied up, you know, James, he probably just let him, let, just threw the chain down. And he did it this time too. So it's like, I guess he's just going to pick those up as he goes. Like, nah, keep the chain around. Not unless S.H.I.E.L.D. ends up hooking up, hook, hooking him up with a special type of chain or something. I don't know. I want him to have a chain. Come on. You've used one twice now. Keep the chain. Don't just toss it aside. It's a good weapon, dude. It works for you. Just put your fire around it. It's just so badass, dude. I'm sorry. I'm going to calm down a little bit. Um, but I'm sure like he was super pissed at himself at the end of the episode because it's like he was so focused on revenge that he ended up not... Um, you know, paying attention, and his uncle ended up, you know, being taken off by uh, the ghost lady, who apparently is keeping him alive. Uh, apparently, there's something else to that, but I'll kind of get to that in a little bit. But, you know, it's just kind of like he was so dead set on revenge, I, you know, he let it get the best of him and kind of consume him instead of him looking out for his uncle. His uncle's now being kidnapped. Just, I mean, it could have ended a lot worse. His uncle could have ended up getting killed by her or driven crazy or whatever. Luckily, they'd had um, serum, but still. Um, he didn't learn, you know, about it being a hit that was put out on him, and you know, by who? Well, we don't know, but it does seem like, I mean, I'm very curious. And that seems like it might have something to do with their family, maybe specifically his uncle. Because of the whole situation at the end when she's looking in the book and he's touching it and Lucy's kind of looking at him like, yeah, let's, fin like, let's fix me first and then finish what we started. So making me wonder is... He made it seem like he wasn't a part of the whole situation, but maybe he actually was. Maybe he didn't actually confess his full involvement in the whole situation. Because it seems like he's kind of, I don't know whether it's the book enticing him, or is it because he has a goal of his own that he wants in mind. So maybe his uncle, e Uncle Eli, isn't kind of the good saint that we thought he was trying to do the right thing. Maybe he beat the crap out of home dude, well, Lucy's husband, because of the fact that it's like, oh, you hid the book from me, you bastard. It's like the moment he found out, it's like, oh... They found the book. Oh, they also have, they do have, she did bring up the fact is that she had, Lucy and her people had abilities. It's like, oh yeah, and they found the book, like, and he was immediately willing to go with them. So that was a little suspicious. Also, I thought what was going to happen is she was going to end up tracking down Gabe. Because she happened to look in his cell and there was a picture of Gabe and um, Robbie. Or, you know, of them as a family. So I was thinking, like, okay, she track him down and kind of use him as leverage. That's what I was thinking. But, I mean, that turned out not to be the case. But who's to say that won't be the case in the future? Another side of this episode is the fact is that Simmons still a little pissed at um, Fitz for hiding the whole Ida situation, which is kind of like, well, give and take on how you want to interpret that situation. If you want to be a little pessimistic, you can be like, well, Fitz didn't tell you because he didn't trust you because it's like with your whole new position, it's like other people kind of, you know, bringing it back, like May didn't really trust you, but it's like, hey, you don't trust the director, but it's like you're still in a position where you have to tell the director everything. You would have been obligated to tell that. So it's kind of like, I mean, plus on top of that, you're having to lie about the whole Robbie and um, Daisy situation. So it's kind of understandable, you know, like not wanting to put more on you. Well, at that time, you he didn't know about her lying about that. So, but still, it's like you even want to be pessimistic it's about that. But also, it could be like, hey, I, I love you, and I just don't didn't want you to have to lie for me. I want to be in a situation where it's like I'm trying to be in a situation where I can help a friend, but also like you know look out for you as my girlfriend, like the woman I'm in love with, and everything. Which is how really you know you know I like I. I'm very pessimistic, but I like, you know, I was thinking very pessimistically during the show, but at this point in time while I'm talking about it, I'm like, I want to think a little more optimistically. It's like, they've worked so hard. They've worked three seasons to get to where they are now, being in a relationship, everything. They've worked through so much, so, it, you know. But, um, 
she did have to take the lie detector test. I did love the fact is it was just like, so have you ever been a part of the Hydra? And she was like, absolutely. He was like, wait, what? She's like, yeah, I went undercover back in, you know, back in season two. So I was like, oh, was like, you know, it's just kind of, I was like, I love that response. It's just like, wait, what? I guess not everyone knows about her time in, um, I mean, I guess that was back when Phil was running it. So I guess a lot of people that are currently working at S.H.I.E.L.D. weren't working there at the time, maybe working at different branches of S.H.I.E.L.D., wherever the case may be. So that was kind of neat. Kind of just, I don't know. I like I like throwbacks to previous seasons, especially when I remember those. So I was like, oh, I remember. Because that's where we actually got first introduced to Mockingbird because she was actually, um, um, actually working there, too. She was undercover as well. I mean, granted, we didn't know at that time, but still. Speaking of Mockingbird, I am wondering about it. We had the whole, like, oh, they're, like, dissolved to the, like, disavowed so they can't join back the S.H.I.E.L.D. and everything. But it's like, remember the whole, like, sadly, um, S.H.I.E.L.D., Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. most wanted kind of fell through. It's not being picked up. So it's like, I kind of brought that up last time. And it's like, back at, like, season three's finale when I was talking about it, it's like, will, does that mean we'll get Bobby and Hunter back? I had to think about it for a second. I'm glad. I randomly happened to be saying their names, like, midway through. And I was like, oh, yeah, right, right, that's her name, Bobby. Because I was calling her Mockingbird. And I was like, well, what, what, what's her name again? It's like, uh, Bobby. So, I mean, will we, I hope we get to see them again at some point. It'll most likely be kind of like a one-off thing. It probably won't be a permanent thing. It's like, hey, we're working... I mean, especially when you have, like, um, Daisy off doing her own thing. Who's to say she won't cross paths with them? It's like she needs help from somebody. It's like, try and get in contact with them. I mean, they're kind of technically out the spy game. I mean, I'm very curious to know what they are up to and everything, so. Um, because basically, uh, she ended up helping, um, Jeffrey, uh, the new director. I finally paid attention to know his name now. Um, but talking to that senator lady that's actually a bad guy. And then had that whole thing, like, conversation of, like, oh, Inhumans and everything. And it basically, it led to him revealing himself to the world. like, hey, I'm an Inhuman. You know, it's like, oh, not only was I a hero back in Vienna and whatnot, did I save those people, but I'm also an Inhuman. So you're sitting here judging them. It's like, judge me, because I'm here. You don't see me going on a, you know, terrorist spree. You don't see me being a bad person. It's just kind of like, you know, because it's like, oh, you want to, I mean, if you want to break it down, it's like, you, you want to peg in humans as bad people. It's like, let's not forget humans are pieces of crap, too. So, you know, a lot of stuff that goes down isn't just always in humans' fault. You know, it's like, you forget the fact that humans naturally are scary, but I guess it's like, well, the fact is you added superpower to that, too. It just makes them, like, why in humans are so terrifying. I mean, even going as far as saying, like, they're going to, as far as referring to themselves as inhumans, it's like, so they kind of subjugate themselves, they kind of separate themselves already, you know, kind of, you know, it's a name that kind of strikes fear in people and whatnot, so it's kind of um, interesting. Uh, what we did have, though, that proved very interesting was the whole um, Simmons situation where she was like, basically, it's like, oh, you know, there were some irregularities, irregularities during your test, you know, your um, lie detector test, so it's like, oh, why don't you go through it again, and then she's like... Nah, because if I did, I'd have, you know, the whole subject of you being a hero during Vienna might come up and I'd have to lie about that because we both know the truth. I'm like, wait, what was it? Wait, what? For one, go you Simmons being all sly and she's just so like happy about it. It's like, oh yeah, a team that works together grows stronger together. It's like, look at you. You're so good. A team that trusts together works better together, something like that. You know, she was uh, quoting him and he had a little bit of a nervous look on his face. I was like, holy crap. So what is the truth in that situation? What he Was he actually not trying to be a hero? Did he actually kind of like go all like kind of freeze and like didn't know what to do? But Everything got framed as like, oh, yeah, like I'm actually a hero or did like someone had to convince him to go like, is that something everyone knows or is it something only Simmons knows as she's kind of like his most trusted advisor, like she's kind of like his right hand lady and whatnot. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, out of anyone, of course, she would have the most dirt on him, which kind of proves the point of like, hey. When the situation comes, like, when it comes down to it, Simmons is ready to play dirty if she needs to. It's like, go Gemma, go you. But um, I guess that just kind of proves you more that she isn't really on his side. She doesn't trust him. And it's like, and it's kind of putting, it's like, hey, maybe he isn't all that 100% trustworthy. Especially when you have the end of the episode where he's working with, uh, me, well, not really working with the um, Senator Lady. Because she brings up the whole information about the whole prison thing. It's like, oh, here you have some of your agents working with a wanted criminal, Quake. And then you have, oh, here's the, this thing, you know, Ghost Rider. And be like, oh, he killed a person. It's like, so is S.H.I.E.L.D. knowing, are they ignorant to the fact that they're working with a killer? Or are they knowingly working with a killer and they just don't care, kind of using it? It's like, he's like, all right, 
what's it going to take to basically make this kind of go away? And she's kind of smiling and it's like, okay. Because for one, like during that whole situation, like they didn't know, you know, Gemma didn't know about the whole like, oh, we're doing something with, um, you know, the whole uh, dark hole, like leading to the whole prison thing. She didn't know about that. I mean, because she already had enough lies to cover for her. So they didn't want to stack more on it because she told like the moment Fitz started bringing up the dark hole, she's like, ah, don't tell me. Um, so, but it kind of caught her and Jeffrey off guard when the senator brought it up. I'm like, isn't that a little suspicious that she knows exactly where S.H.I.E.L.D. agents are? But then I was like, well, I'm, obviously she has a watchdog connection, so I'm sure it's like, because that prison had a lot of watchdogs. So it's like, is that where they accommodate in that particular prison? Or is it prisons all across the place, like one of the places they meet? I don't know. But... That that was kind of like oh isn't that a little suspicious? But then I was like, well the fact is that everyone's every government agency has their eye on Shield and everything they're doing because it's like Shield is under a microscope because they just brought themselves out into the light, so everyone's just waiting for Shield to kind of screw up. So I was like, hey, she could swing it that way. So because uh, I was thinking like, oh really? Should we really be having one agency kind of keeping tabs on another agency? Which I'm like, I'm sure that happens a lot more than we actually know, but still, nevertheless. But overall, a very good episode, and I cannot wait to see where we go next episode. But that's really all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.